Bowen's reaction series is a series that explains the order in which minerals will crystallize out of a melt. Now we know that igneous rocks are first created from some kind of melt, whether that is magma that is deep down inside of the earth or lava that is on the surface of the earth and will thus then cool into some kind of igneous rock. Bowen's reaction series was created in the early 1900s from um, a series of laboratory experiments that looked at the rate of which some of these minerals would begin to cool out of a melt. And what was noticed were that there were some minerals that preferentially would cool at higher temperatures, and there were some minerals that would preferentially cool at lower temperatures. The minerals that would cool at the higher temperatures are what we call the more mafic minerals. Now mafic essentially means that it contains less silica, so less SiO2. The minerals that would cool at lower temperatures, essentially they would begin to crystallize. Would those be the minerals that are more felsic, which means that they contain more silica. Now the difference between some of these mafic minerals and some of these felsic minerals in silica content is that the more mafic minerals contain silica somewhere around 30 to 38%, whereas felsic minerals contain silica contents anywhere from 70 to 100%. As you can see on the screen here, there are many different kinds of minerals. So the minerals that are at the top of this diagram are gonna be the more ultramafic and mafic minerals, which means that they contain less silica. These are the minerals that are going to be the first to crystallize out of a melt, which, mean, which means that they can crystallize at higher temperatures. The ranges at which minerals will crystallize, the temperature ranges, range from 1400 degrees to 800 degrees. Olivine is the first mineral that will crystallize out of a melt. So let's say we have a melt, a magmatic body that is deep down inside of the earth and it is approximately at 1400 degrees. This means that if this magma were to sit there, olivine would continue to crystallize. If we were to continue to cool this magma, this melt, olivine would continue to crystallize. And then maybe we would have some pyroxene continue to crystallize as well. And then we would have amphibole crystallize, biotite crystallize. But what about on the right hand side of the screen here? What about our plagioclase? Why do we have two different types of series here? These two series are called the discontinuous and the continuous series. Now the discontinuous series contain the minerals of olivine, pyroxene, amphibole, and biotite. These are essentially minerals that are high in magnesium and iron. The continuous series contains the feldspar rich minerals, the plagioclase feldspar, and those range from sodium, uh, calcium rich plagioclase all the way down to sodium rich plagioclase. With the discontinuous series and looking at the minerals of olivine, pyroxene, amphibole, and biotite, they essentially have two main ways in which these minerals can form. The discontinuous series is called the discontinuous series is because let's say that we have a melt, all right, and we begin to cool that melt. Olivine will then begin to crystallize and cool within that melt. However, if this olivine mineral is considered to be incompatible with the rest of the melt, the rest of that magma chamber, essentially that is determined by the amount of silica that is present within that magma in the first place, which is determined ultimately by the source rock, whatever was melted in the first place. If this olivine is incompatible with the melt, 
This olivine will then, that is now crystallized, will then react with the rest of this melt and thus begin to recrystallize into pyroxene. And the same thing can happen to pyroxene. If this pyroxene is thus incompatible with the melt, this pyroxene that is now crystallized will re-react with the melt and thus begin to crystallize in the amphibole. And as this melt chamber continue to cool, all these minerals can essentially transform into one another. Olivine and pyroxene are essentially pairs, pyroxene and amphibole are essentially pairs, amphibole and biotite are essentially pairs. It's called discontinuous because you won't suddenly create olivine and then it would re then re-react into biotite. Olivine would then re-react with the melt to create pyroxene, pyroxene would then re-react with the melt to create amphibole, and then amphibole would re-react with the melt to contain, to create biotite. Now, let's say we did have a magma chamber and we were essentially to begin to cool it at 1400 degrees C and begin to crystallize olivine. If olivine were compatible with that melt, you would essentially continue to create olivine and continue to create olivine, continue to create olivine as that magma chamber were slowly cooling. Thus, that magma chamber would essentially more be like a mafic melt and we would continue to create these mafic minerals. On the right hand side of the screen here, we have the continuous series, which talks about plagioclase feldspar. It's called continuous because either on this, when if you are having a melt and beginning to crystallize, either at a higher temperature or lower temperatures, that melt will either be 100% calcium rich plagioclase feldspar, or it'll be 100% sodium rich plagioclase feldspar. And then you'll just have this varying percentage in between. So what will happen is almost entirely as you are creating this melt, the plagioclase feldspar will essentially keep on re-reacting almost entirely with that melt in order to create plagioclase feldspar. So you're not destroying any or recreating any of this crystalline structure here when in this continuous series. Whereas in the discontinuous series, you are having this restructuring and recrystallization of that mineral in the first place. So you are destroying that crystalline structure. Now the bones reaction series describes the first minerals that crystallize out of a melt, but they can also indicate which would be the first minerals that would begin to melt once you emplace a rock in an environment under high temperatures and high pressures. So olivine would be the first mineral to crystallize out of a melt. Quartz muscovite and potassium feldspar would be the first minerals that would be to melt if you were to begin creating and melting some kind of source rock in the first place in order to create a magma in the first place. As you can see, because olivine cools and crystallizes at an extremely high temperature, that means way down and deep in the earth, olivine at earth's surface is not very stable, which means that olivine is not closely related into the environment in which it was formed and crystallized in the first place. So olivine at earth's surface is heavily subjected to surface processes of weathering, because of this, olivine will readily break down at Earth's surface, which is why a lot of the rocks that we see at Earth's surface that are still present nowadays are more likely going to be our more felsic rocks, those containing high amounts of quartz, muscovite, and potassium feldspar. Lastly, rocks that crystallize from a mafic melt are more likely going to contain these set of minerals right here. So olivine, pyroxene, and calcium-rich plagioclase feldspar. Rocks that crystallize from a felsic melt are more likely going to contain remnants of biotite, but definitely quartz, muscovite, and potassium feldspar with sodium-rich plagioclase feldspar. And rocks that crystallize, melts that crystallize from um, an intermediate melt will contain pyroxene, amphibole, 
biotite, maybe a little bit of quartz and muscovite and potassium feldspar, and about 50-50 of sodium-rich and calcium-rich plagioclase feldspar. Now, these are just the main minerals and constituents of mafic, intermediate, and felsic melts. However, there are many other kind of minerals that can also be present in some of these mafic, intermediate, or felsic amounts, but they are just in a lot less percentage. And so essentially we call these accessory minerals. Now, as we move forward um, later on this semester, we will talk about some of those accessory minerals as well.